Hello, my beautiful people. Hi guys, this is Destiny. I am back because I'm doing this series on the ego death. When the ego dies, the soul awakens. I think this may possibly be a three-part series. Now, I uploaded part one last night. So today I'm back to do part two. So welcome to everyone out there. How's your day going? It's a beautiful Saturday here. I'm having a wonderful and a great time today. Just spending time being me. I always say this is my be me day. So people, how are you really doing? How's things going in your life? And I'm just praying that your weekend is super amazing and that you are enjoying being yourself as well, living to be your best self. So if this is the first time that anyone has come on my channel, this is Destiny and my YouTube channel is Destiny Forever Walks. Guys, when you come in here for the first time, you're not gonna wanna leave. I am extending the red carpet to you, you new people, and I am inviting you to come in and sit with me and watch my videos i am here on my youtube channel to encourage to inspire to motivate and to empower you to become your true self your best version of whom the creator god has created for you to be here on this channel you will learn about your higher greater self you're going to learn about ego traps and you're going to learn about the ego the soul consciousness you're going to learn about the god that is within you you're going to learn so many things that's going to help you to become authentic to become your real self and your raw self you're going to learn about your destiny your purpose why you're here on this planet and then you're going to learn about your truths and your gut intuition the things that you are looking for outside of you it's already inside of you my people so, this is what you learn here on this YouTube channel with Destiny Forever Walks. Let's get into it because I, want, I don't want to make this long. I have notes. And this is part two. The ego death. When the ego dies, the soul awakens. Part two. Now, I am back because, like I said, I did part one last night. I'm not going back to repeat all that information. So you need to go to my channel and look for that video, part one. And you need to pull it up, watch that video to its entirety, my people, and that will bring you up to where I will continue today. Now, last night, I will say that I did talk about the ego and the ego is a part of us that will always be a part of us, but it does not have to dominate or control us. The ego is the, or is an identity of our own construction. Now we have the choice to say, hey, I'm not giving my power to my ego to control me, but we have that power to move on from our ego place of, of life and move on into the place that the creator wants us to be. So we did talk about the ego. What is the ego? We talked about the ego death. So today I'm gonna pick up my people and I told you I'm gonna come back and I'll give you seven steps. Seven steps that you must go through to arrive to that place of your spiritual awakening, to awakening your soul to your greater higher self. So let's start seven steps that we must go through in order for the ego to die and for the soul to awaken these seven steps are absolutely important for you for you to understand so you can know how to just freely just let go of all of the things and the lies and the control that ego had over you and you can move on to become your higher greater self so my people, in giving you these seven steps that we must go through in order for the ego to die and for the soul to awaken, then I'm gonna share with you guys my story and some of my experiences. 
I may not go into the details because I've already done these videos before. I did videos on my story, on my experiences, so maybe you can find those videos on my YouTube channel. But I will share a little bits and pieces about my story and my experiences and how I went through these seven steps and how I arrived to the place of my soul awakening to this higher, greater self. And sometimes when I share my story, these are my truths, <laughs> my people, and I do get a little bit emotional because it's not like that. It's a regret, no. It's just like knowing that, hey, I arrived to the place that I know that the Creator wants me to be. I am living my best life. I am living my purpose. And, the, and, and, it, and those things that I went through to get to there, it just <sighs> resonate. So I may get a little emotion on this. So let's talk about these seven steps we must go through, my people. The first one is number one. It's a spiritual awakening. The first step is when we wake up. That's the very first step. We have to wake up. We must leave behind our daily routines and our everyday desires. And then we ask ourselves, why am I here? What is my purpose? What am I supposed to do on this planet? But this awakening of people occurs when we begin to feel that we have a void in our life and that void is something that we feel like we cannot feel. And then in many cases, my people, this awakening comes with depression and it comes with the feeling of being alone and I've been there. I've been there. I went through that. I went through a really long period of depression because I woke up now to find myself out there alone on the limb because the people that I was around, even family members, they kind of distant themselves because I wasn't no more acting like them talking like them, speaking as they used to speak. I'm not saying all those things that I used to say. I was carefully walking by the divine direction and his orders. And I was not out there confessing Christianity and doing all that stuff. And they were like, okay, you got to step away from us. But that's the spiritual awakening. And it will come sometimes, like I said, with depression or the feelings of being alone because people will detach themselves from you. They will separate themselves from you because they don't know you anymore. They knew the false you. Let's go to number two. The dark night, which they call the dark night of the, of, of the soul. I coin it as the dark night of the ego because the ego is that dark side of us. It's the subconscious, it's a subconscious state of us. Our soul is like my people. So number two, the dark night. And my people, this is the deepest part of depression, deepest part of depression. During the spiritual awakening, that is our lowest point. When we are in complete despair, and we know that something, something has to happen in our life, but we don't quite know what that something is. We don't know what that something is because that something feels so drastic. And we know it has to have such a meaningful something from, from where we are now. But we don't know what that something has to be or what it will be. So we become isolated from other people. We become separated from families and friends and close loved ones. And even sometimes we are isolated from ourselves. Number three, exploration. Now, through exploration, my people, we start trying to fill that void with things that we 
at once found silly and ludicrous. We experiment so many different things. We experiment with the mystic arts, astrology, numerology, meditation, touching trees, grounding in the sand out in the earth. We experiment energy healing and other practices and things that focus on connecting the mind, the body, and the soul. And then we branch out with our spirituality that takes us beyond the normal mainstream religions, people. And that is to try to understand what we are really feeling. Number four, a glimpse of enlightenment. And finally, we experience our first small glimpse of enlightenment, which is also known as the Sotoria. So what we do, now we step back and we find out that is not who I used to be. That is, that is not the person that I once knew. Now you are becoming into your true self, your true natural self. And now you're seeing yourself totally different from the way your parents have said that you are, that the world had programmed that you to be, school systems, churches who have program you into a whole nother system, you find it all totally different. So we take a look now into our true nature, into our true self. During our exploration, my people, and sometimes I'm telling you, it can become so terrified of this experience because you're looking at someone that you never really truly knew before. The inner child has returned and you didn't know how to even deal with that because you ran and hid away from your inner child and you had no more connection with your inner child until your true self showed up. That man or that woman that now appears in the mural. Every time you look into that mural, you see that little innocent inner child looking back at you. That is a glimpse of enlightenment. And my people, we take a look into our true nature and into our true selves during our exploration. And then, as I said, it can become terrified of what we are experiencing during that moment and what happened. This terror or this new awakening, it can push us away from further exploration or it even can make us want to find out more. At times I wanted to run back because I was comfortable. I knew the people that I was with. I've been with them all of my life. I grew up with a lot of friends. I had, you know, been a part of my life for so many years. And I regret sometimes I ever came to that place because I was losing the only thing that I really knew, the people, the love that I had. But they were not accepting me. They were not embracing me anymore. They were pushing me away from them because now I had become different than they were. I was talking different. I didn't talk the same language they were talking. I did not talk about Christianity the way they were talking. So at times I wanted to try to hang on and bring them back, but then I kept hearing my soul saying, Destin, you had to let go. And you have to understand I'm trying to get you to a higher, greater place, a better place for who you really are. And so my people, what happened was at that time, I just let go. Cause I wanted to find out the more that I knew that he had 
He had purpose and predestined for me. Number five, soul growth. Now this step can take months, my people, if not years. And this is when our soul begins to mature. During that process, my people, we develop the ability to understand what spiritual practices work for us and then which practices does not work for us or have an effect on us. Now listen, also the soul growth, this will depends on each individual. Some beliefs might resonate with you and then while others beliefs and things that you are now experiencing, they won't touch your soul at all. You are growing, my people, and you're moving away from the ego, out of the ego traps, away from the ego lies, away from the lies that the matrix system have programmed you to believe, Christianity, religions have programmed you to believe, your parents and things they taught you, which they did not have no understanding of what they were teaching you, but they only taught you what they knew. You are moving away from those things into your greater, higher self. So, as our soul begins to mature, we focus on the practices that hone our patience. We focus on that practice now that is resonating with us, that is agreeing with what the Creator is saying about us. So, we focus on the practices that hone our patience, our discipline, and then we focus in that most successfully because now we are attuning ourselves to the higher greater power the divine intelligence of the universe, the creator God himself. Number six, the surrendering, my people. That's number six. That's sometimes one of the hardest things for us to do is letting go of the things that we are so comfortable with, the things that we are so familiar with, the things that we have been attached to our entire life. Now we have to surrender it. That's the hardest part of it sometimes. Letting go. Letting go of things that no longer serve us. Letting go of things that's no longer who we were said that we are. Letting go of all those dead skin, those layers of lies, and all the manipulation, the control. Letting go of things that we were so comfortable with because we were familiar with these things. We lived in these things our entire life. And now to move beyond that into uncharted territory, to unknown territory, away from the people we thought that we were so comfortable with, that we so trusting and loving with, it was hard to let go. Even for myself, it was hard to let go. But number six, the surrendering place. People, we got to learn to let go. We have become intimately familiar with our soul now. And we already knew that ego, but we have to surrender everything that is a not a part of our true nature and our true self. We gotta let go and we gotta let ourselves be pulled into the direction that the Creator is trying to pull us to so we become our best and better version of who He created for us to be. We got to let go. Those things that brought us to where we are now, that had lied to us, manipulated us, and dominated us, who have brought fears into our lives, it's not serving us, my people. And those people that was with us, whether they're family members, church members, close friends, other relatives, I don't care. They are no longer serving us. Their term has been terminated. And we now have to accept that and move forward. That can be hard. But we have to surrender. And when we surrender everything that is not a part of our true nature, or our true self. But 
things that were created by our ego. Those things doesn't even mean nothing to us now. We gotta realize that. We gotta drop it and move on to the higher calling that the Creator is calling us to that kingdom of God that is within ourselves. My people, we gotta let go of the patterns that limit us. We gotta let go of the things that holds us back. And then we gotta let our souls grow bypassing our ego. And for this stuff to be most effective, then we must trust what we do not know. And then we got to let go of all the fears that were brought to us by our ego. We got to let go of all those lies, all of those fears, all those negative thoughts and negative behaviors, the negative environment that it, the ego surrounded us in. We got to break out the ego traps, my people. And everything that the ego brought into our lives, we got to let go. And the last one is number seven. Awareness and end. The last step is the end of the line, my people. And at that place, we should be happy and exciting that I have broken, or broken away and out of those ego traps. I am no longer being held in captivity against my free will, against me speaking out my true identity, against me being my true and natural self. I have come to the end of that line. I am fully aware of myself. And then we have explored through the process of coming out of the ego and the ego traps and the programs of the world systems and all those different other programs that we have been held to. Now we have grown and we have explored and we have surrendered, my people. And thus, we have evolved beyond our ego. People, at that place, you have become awakened. Our soul has awakened. We are now moving into our greater and our higher self. We are being that raw and authentic person who the Creator has created for us to be because He called us out of darkness into the marvelous light. We are light. We love. We are everything that he says that we are now we are living our best self in our best life we are moving people into the greatest and the highest state of consciousness to the kingdom of god which was already in us he put himself in us my people the kingdom of god is within us the kingdom of heaven is with with is within us and we have moved up to our greater highest state of consciousness we have moved from those seven major chakras starting at the root and we went all the way through our sacral our, our solar plexus chakra our heart our throat our third eye which is the enlightenment and then we went up to the kingdom the crown chakra which is the kingdom of my people, we have become our greater and our higher self. Now we understand what we have been searching for in the beginning. We understand it, we accept it, we embrace it, and we look now and we turn back and we see the ego and the world and all those things that we left behind. It's not even important anymore. We are being happy and authentic because we're living out our best life, our best self. And then we understand what we have been searching for in the beginning. And we see that all those stages, they are illusions. That's what they are. They are illusions. All of it, my people. It's not the reality. Our reality is our true experiences. Is who the Creator has created for us to be. The truth is always inside of us. That is who we are. 
our experiences. Listen, people, the truth is in us now. And we know that the ego should not define who we are. The ego should exist simply as a tool to be used whenever needed because we have the power, we have the control. We have taken back our power and our control away from the ego and we are not allowing the ego to program us and manipulate us into doing what it says that we need to be doing against what the Creator has created for us to do and our purpose. So we have back our power, my people. We are using our power. Now we can use the ego any way that we want as a tool to continue to reach our higher, greater self. So who we are is something that is so much greater than we were ever told my people we are God we are children of the most high God because he said greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world my people you have arrived at your higher state of consciousness your soul has awakened ego death can be one of the most beautiful experiences in your life. It can bring you new understanding, new approaches to life, and it can help you to get up on the high places where the Creator is trying to pull you so you can stand and declare to this world that you are the light of the world, that you are peace, that you are love, you are hope, you are the joy and you are the kingdom of God because the kingdom of God is in you. The universe you are, the universe is in you. You are God's little children and children of the most high God. However, my people, with the ego death, you'll lose the security of who you truly are which can be frightening, very frightening for some. But listen, you will be intimately in touch with your intuitive self, your gut intuition, your soul, your higher state of consciousness, the God that is within you, the goddess or the God that is within you. You will intimately be in touch with knowledge, wisdom, and understanding with an enlightenment of your higher greater self my people you have awakened your soul the ego death is something that has to take place in order for your soul to be awakened to his higher greater self namaste my lovely beautiful people I hope you guys understand that. That's part two, so go back and make sure you watch part one of that. And then you'll get your better understanding. It could possibly be another part coming. I don't know if I will do a part three, but we'll see. In the meantime, I hope that has helped you, and I'm going to see you people at Destiny's next video. Namaste. I bow to the divine in you. I love you guys out there, and for all the new people that have just stepped in, I love you and I'm so glad you came and watched this video. Just go down my whole channel and scroll through all my videos and watch Destiny's videos. You are going to learn things that you have never known before. Finally, you're going to learn some truths. Namaste.